Hello, everyone. Happy New Year, and I hope you are not having any health concerns uh, related to the pandemic. So this is my first video for 2022, and thank you so much for all those who, who subscribed and supported my channel, and it's now monetized. And this video is uh, created uh, to help the researchers like me uh, to submit uh, to know the, the steps on how to submit a research paper to legitimate conferences and um, potential publications. So a, a quick caveat, I am not endorsing any journal or any conference uh, on this video, but this is just my experience on what are the things that I need to, uh, to, to look into if I will be submitting my paper to conference presentations. So let's begin with step number one, which is preparing your technical paper following APA format or IEEE format and running a content similarity check to ensure that plagiarism percentage is below 25%. So this step is very much relevant because uh, as in the academe, you have a panel who will be reviewing your content and then providing constructive criticisms for your revisions. The final output in that step would be the input for the content similarity check. So once you've done your revisions, all you need to do is to find for a plagiarism checker, maybe in the internet as free or uh, a legitimate one, which is uh, I will be showing you um, in, in, in the latter portion. And making sure that the plagiarism percentage is below the, the threshold, which uh, in this case, this is the threshold for the conference, which is 25%. But most of the time in the academe, they have a much lower um, percentage for the plagiarism, which is sometimes 10%. All right. So to show you an example, I have here my master's thesis, or actually one of my master's thesis, and it's entitled Automated Billy Fruit Sorting Device Using LSVM Image Classification Model. And I have submitted this one in a conference proceeding um, happening in January 28 to 29, 2022 in Singapore. And I have submitted for a virtual presentation and not an oral one because, you know, still it's it's still uh, scary to to go to countries um, because of the pandemic. So, looking at my uh, page right now, you have the IEEE format. Looks like a tri IEEE format, but it's already tweaked because it's already following the the uh, conference um, guidelines for the paper. So. That's how uh, it looks like, but maybe I'll, I can um, scroll down a bit to show that it's following the IMRAD format. Um, just a little bit different for the order. Like we have the introduction, now next is the related literature, the methodology, uh, the results and discussions, and finally we have the conclusions and uh, the preliminary. Um, sections we have the acknowledgement and of course the references. So that's how it looks like uh, after you have completed your technical paper. And for the similarity check, I am in, currently enrolled in Mapo University. Um, my course is PhD in um, electronics engineering, and we have uh, in Blackboard we have Turn It In, and it's our um, plagiarism checker. And I have submitted this one um, January 5th, and then it resulted to an 8% similarity. So uh, the, the most important thing to know is the similarity portion, where right? it should be below 25% or below 10% as required by the academe. You also have this uh, button to download the, uh, the receipt or the digital receipt, receipt of the turning in um, submission. So that's for the first step. We'll now move on to step number two. So the second step is looking for a conference or conferences which has an in-depth peer review process and will submit accepted articles to journals 
that are indexed in legitimate scientific metadata repository. So I am not going into the detail. Again, I am only showing an example of a legitimate conference which I have submitted my paper because there are so many uh, videos concerning how to uh, do a deep dive review of conferences, like you're going to check for uh, the, the organizer, the speaker, and the, the double blind peer review process that they've had. So in this, in this uh, example, uh, we will be seeing those in, in their page. So let's dive into the details. Let me go to Google. And I already did um, a review of the conferences. And this is my example. ICSET or the International uh, Conference um, for si on Science and Engineering te and Technology. So they have this one, ICSET.net as uh, their domain. And then here you will be seeing submit an abstract or register now. Since I am looking into submitting um, my paper for, uh, for conference presentation and potential uh, publication, so I will be hitting submit abstract. But there are several tabs here which before you submit uh, your abstract or your paper or article, you have to check first the tabs or the information on this page. So we have uh, about Excel. What, do, what is this? IFERP. IFERP is the organizer of this presentation or of this conference. And you have uh, the guidelines and um, the, the FAQs, common questions and the answers to those questions. So we have the, the, com the committee. You, will, you can also check those information, the submission um, information or guidelines. Later on, we'll be um, downloading one of them. We have the registration guidelines and FAQs, publication, and so on and so forth. But one of the good things about this one is the public, the publication, because we are looking, or we are, um, we are also, we wanted to know what are the indices or where it will go, the databases which will index this conference, and we have this one, two, three, four conferences which are legitimate conference uh, or in the in indexing databases or metadata database or metadata uh, proceedings. We have DOAJ, we have Scopus, Google Scholar, and Web of Science. And I will not dwell into much information about that. You can search other videos about um, this indices or databases, but these are legitimate indices. All right, so moving on to the next one. Um, we will be going to step number three. Step number three is review the abstract or full paper submission guidelines and download the provided template for reference. So going back to the uh, ICSET page, ICSET page uh, for submission, because we are uh, supposed to be submitting the paper, right? But in here, we have two different options for paper submission. You can submit an abstract or you can submit a full paper. So uh, you can also check the, the, the content or the differences between the two. But on my case, I selected full paper, full paper submission. So in here, what I can do is to download the full paper template. And once I click this one, uh, it will be downloaded in my drive and I can check on the details. So this is the format, which uh, I, I think you already have noticed in the previous, um, when, I, when I presented my paper, it already follows the same format. Um, it, it looks like a tri IEEE format because it has two columns, but uh, some of the formats like uh, the author's name, this is in IEEE, it's also formatted in two columns, but this one, it's a single liner or single column. All right, so that's for the full paper. Of course, you can also download for the abstract uh, template. But in my case, again, I, I, I downloaded the full paper template and then I proceed to step number four. So for step number four, follow the paper format and submit the completed output to the provided link and then wait for the acceptance letter. So after you have uh, completed the, the downloading of the format, making sure that your paper follows each of the steps which are provided on the template, 
and then you have this one as your final output that you can um, upload in the uh, in the submission paper page. So going back to the slide or to the paper submission page, you can select this one as your uh, option as full paper submission and then supply all information. And don't forget to uh, indicate information or enter information to those fields with the asterisk because you cannot proceed to the next step if those uh, fields are not in inputted with information. So you can have your name, co-author, email ID, the country code, paper title, and then the country, the department, and so on and so forth. In this, in this uh, section, you will be uploading your file. So once you have submitted your paper and that on the paper submission page, you will wait for the acceptance letter. And the next step is you will be receiving an email. So open the email and then check for the review and plagiarism and check results. And once accepted, the registration link will be provided. So in my case, I have received an email from Exet, and it is how it looks like. So it says greetings from Exet or dear Gilbert Novellero, it's me, greeting from Exet 2022. It's my pleasure to inform you that your paper entitled blah, blah, blah has been accepted for International Conference or Exet 2022. So please find the attachment of the acceptance letter. So let's open up this acceptance letter and check if it also leads us to the clues if it's a legitimate conference or not. See here, it's IFERP. IFERP is um, the organizer of this conference and I have uh, presented one of my master's theses uh, and the organizer is also IFERP. The conference name is, uh, or the, the it's ICFI, or environmental engineering. And then um, it's legitimate because I, I have confirmed my, uh, my thesis what has been published in a Scopus Index um, um, journal. So the content of the acceptance letter is it has my abstract ID, the paper title, the author name, co-author, and then the content uh, or the body. So my paper has been accepted for oral or video presentation on the 28th to 29th January 2022 at Singapore. And my paper has been accepted after the double blind peer review process and plagiarism check. So from there, we will be receiving or we will be seeing a registration link on the email as well. So going back to the email, you have this registration link because this will be, um, uh, this will secure our slot. Once we have registered, we can definitely present during this the conference. So clicking the registration link, this will lead us to uh, the registration page of Exet, and it will lead us to, or it will show us the information about the payment or the fee for the, the presentation and as well as the conference uh, publication or the, the, the paper publication. So for physical presentation, although this is not applicable to me because I just wanted to uh, present it virtually, uh, let, let's still check uh, the, the, the fees. So we have for oral or poster presentation, we have uh, different categories. We have student, delegate, or academia, industrial, professional. Uh, we have also here only presentation. We also have listener, co-author, or accompanying person and the initial booking amount. So we have the host country and other countries broken down into IFER premium member and then non IFER members. So uh, we'll not dwell on so much of the uh, fees for each of the categories, but I am particular with the virtual presentation because this is what I wanted to do. So the registration categories for the virtual presentations are conference plus Scopus or world or web of science publication. And this is the option that I, uh, I really uh, I am rooting into. So we have only presentation and listener. So looking at this row, we have, we are not in Singapore, so we are not in the host, from the host country. We are on the other countries because I am from the Philippines and I am not an IFERP member. There, therefore, the fee for the conference presentation plus the publication is 249 US dollars. So all you need to do is to select your option and then make sure to enter your name. I am just typing in my name so that we will be 
uh, able to proceed to the next uh, to the next page. So I will not enter my actual number. This is just a dummy number. Make sure this is 11 digit 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then enter the email address. This is just a dummy as well, an email. And then check in the CAPTCHA and click online payment. All right, while we're waiting, let's go back to the presentation. So that's the registration link. And actually we are already covering step number six, which is follow the registration process and then pay the necessary conference and publication fees. So going back to the page, there you are. So we're on the online payment gateway of Exet. And it will be requiring us to fill out some other information like our address. So filling out the information for the country, we are from the Philippines. State, um, I am putting here Metro Manila and city for the city. And the postal code is 1607. And I'm just writing down my um, zone, my boomer. But if you are the one who is uh, doing this one, make sure that you are inputting your exact address. All right, so checking this one, I accept the terms and conditions and clicking confirm to proceed to the next, um, to next page. So as you can see here, this is very much important that the amount is no longer 249, but it's now 263.442, which when I, uh, sent my when I sent my payment, it's around 13,500 pesos. It's because it has the bank convenience charge, which is 5.8% uh, of the 249, the value of the conference um, fee. All right, next is click the checkout. So this is the last uh, section of the payment page wherein I am no longer inputting any information in here because this is very much uh, critical. You, you will be asked to provide your card number and then the expiry date and then the security code, a three digit security code. But make sure, this is just a quick tip, uh, make sure that you are um, choosing the payment, the, the right payment category. We have the, the, the credit card and then the debit cards. Uh, I did an error previously because it's, on the credit card section, though I inputted my debit card information and it didn't complete the transaction for the payment. So this is just a quick tip. So that's all for step number six. And we're down to the last step for this video. And the last step is to create a slideshow and a video, which are requirements for the virtual conference presentation. And basically what you can do is uh, you already have presented this to a panel or your paper has been presented to a panel. You, you have the presentation, but make sure you trim it down to um, a, a bit shorter presentation because as a requirement of this conference, they just wanted to have like a maximum of 10 minute video or 10 minute presentation during the conference. So if you have a 30 minute video during your actual presentation uh, in the academe, make sure you trim it down to like 10 to 15 minutes so that you will be uh, following the procedures or the requirement or guidelines of the conference during the presentation. All right, I think that's all that I've got for this presentation. And I hope I have shared some tips that are helpful for new researchers. And although you are not a new researcher, you may have uh, learned something about uh, the procedures that I've shared through this video. So thank you so much for listening, everyone. And I hope you will root into the next videos that I'll be uploading in my YouTube channel. All right, goodbye.